I'm going to start as Muslims do in the name of God in Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah to proceed Brothers and sisters in humanity I greet you with the warmest Islamic greetings of peace Peace be with you Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting argument for the existence of a grand designer existence of the divine being, the divine reality God and this argument is the argument from design also known in Western philosophy as the teleological argument. Now this form of the argument is not going to be design of species or concerning design of biological organisms, but rather it's going to be the fine tuning, the established calculation, the established balance, the design of the universe to permit human life. And this is quite key because if we look and we scratch the surface of the universe and we see a intricate type of design and fine-tuning that has allowed our existence and there are many examples of this for example consider where the earth is how far it is away from the sun if it was slightly closer to the sun it would be too hot for life if it was slightly away from the sun it would be too cold for life also take the expansion rate of the universe as an example if the expansion rate of the universe differed by 10 to the power of minus 18 seconds which is one quintillionth of a second the universe would have recollapsed upon itself we wouldn't have the universe today take for example if there were any changes in any of the physical constants that we know of for example even the gravitational constant and other constants that we know in physics Take for example entropy or the volume of the phase space of possible universes. I mean it, it's so small, it's so finely tuned. It's incredible to say that that just came about by chance. And the volume of the phase space of possible universes according to various physicists is 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 123. I mean this number, number is phenomenal. So we have all this intricate design, this apparent fine-tuning and interestingly if these values of constants were changed by even the slightest, by a hair's breadth, we wouldn't have a life-permitting universe. So in this slide there are three possible explanations for this. Number one, that it's just physical necessity, it has to be the way it is. It was always like that, it always was going to be like that. It doesn't require an explanation physical necessity. Number two, chance. Or number three, design. So let's rationally talk about these explanations, possible explanations. Now could it be just physical necessity? Well this is absurd because it would have us believe that a universe that wouldn't permit life, that couldn't permit life, could never exist. And we know this is a scientific and mathematical impossibility. It is far more likely that there should be a universe that doesn't permit life, that prohibits life than one that does. Also that we know that all of this fine tuning, if it changed by even a hair's breadth, we wouldn't have a life permitting universe or we wouldn't have this universe that permits life. Significantly we have to understand that these values and constants are not dependent on the laws of nature. If they were dependent on the laws of nature then we have to say well it is what it is, it just is. So physical necessity is not a plausible explanation. So it leads us to chance. Well, let's be rational. I mean, the chances for a life permitting universe based upon this fine tuning and this established balance and calculated design are so unlikely that to even claim them, claim them will be irrational. It will be counter discourse, means we can't have a conversation anymore. For example, I could have a conversation with someone who doesn't believe in a grand designer, like an atheist. And I could postulate that, you know, my mother is not really my mother, I think she's an alien, she's a genderless alien that flew here on a special spaceship. Now, obviously the reaction would be, Mr. Hamza Zodzis, you're being quite irrational. And I'll be like, well, there's a chance. Because there is a chance, especially from a formal logic perspective. So you could see that cl clutching at intellectual straws and holding onto the chance hypothesis even though it's highly unlikely is irrational and counter discourse it means we can't have a rational conversation anymore also it's impractical 
For example, would we claim chance if we saw a rhino appear in our front garden overnight? Or if we saw a 747 appear in our back garden in the morning? I mean, would, just, would we say it's just by chance? But even if people still claim chance, and I would argue it's not just about chance, it's something called specified probability, that not only is it highly unlikely, but it conforms to an independent discovered pattern. Let me give an example. Say we had a chimpanzee or, or a monkey typing away, and after 24 hours, we see printed next to the laptop or computer, Romeo and Juliet. Now, you may have seen the unlikelihood of words like cat, dog, bird, bat, wall, chair, table. You may have appreciated that this may have happened, that the monkey happened to type eligible words, words that we can understand, even though it's unlikely. But now you're thinking, how on earth, not only did he write words, but they conform to the independent pattern of English grammar and a Shakespearean play. Then you know there must be a rational explanation for this because chance is ridiculous. However, people may not understand this and they may think, well, you know what, maybe there's still a chance. Well, let's take this mathematically. British mathematicians relatively recently did a study and they basically said, how long would it take for a monkey or a gorilla typing away to produce to be or not to be from Hamlet's play? That's it, to be or not to be. And they said it wouldn't take one year. It wouldn't take two. Actually, it wouldn't take 10 years. It wouldn't take a thousand years. It wouldn't take a million years. It wouldn't take 10 million. It wouldn't even take a billion. It wouldn't take 10 billion. It wouldn't even take 20 billion. It would take 28 billion years just for a monkey to type to be or not to be with the spaces. So, in a way, rationally speaking, to claim the chance hypothesis would be equivalent of rejecting the universe because the universe is only 14 billion years old. So we know chance is not plausible, therefore there must have been a designer, a grand designer, cosmic designer, which is best explained by the existence of God. Now there are some contentions, for example, we have Richard Dawkins, for example, in his book, The God Delusion, on page 157, 158, he says, you know, design seems quite powerful, but who designed the designer? Well, this is actually irrational to even claim this, because in the philosophy of science, the best explanation doesn't require an explanation. For example, if we were on the moon, and we were digging away, and we found, for example, pieces of mobile phone, and a computer screen, and technology, and arrowheads, and pottery, the best explanation would be there was a civilization there. Now claiming the best explanation requires an explanation doesn't really deny the best explanation. And to even keep on asking an explanation for the best explanation, if we do this ad infinitum forever, we will never have an explanation which undermines science itself. Also we have another contention which is the multiverse theory that there are actually an infinite number of universes. So if there's an infinite number of universes, it reduces the probability. It actually would be far more probable that we had a finely tuned universe to permit our life, to permit our existence. But first and foremost, there is no empirical evidence to prove that there are an infinite number of bloated universes. Also, it goes against rationality, it goes against Occam's razor, which postulates not to multiply entities beyond necessity and that the most simplest and most comprehensive explanation is the best explanation. So multiverse, infinite number of universes, is not simple because it's infinite and it's not comprehensive because it raises more questions such as how do, did these universes appear? Do these universes require fine-tuning? How do they relate with one another? Don't they collide? All of these questions. So a, a single grand all-powerful designer is a far more powerful explanation. A final contention is, is actually what you would call the anthropic principle, which basically states that we shouldn't be surprised that this universe is life permitting because we're alive, there is life within the universe. This is true, but it doesn't deny our argument. Let me give you an example. Say for example, I was taken to court on trumped up charges that I was a drug dealer, and then my punishment was to be shot by a firing squad of 100 fully trained men 
who never missed before and they have special guns that are 100% accurate that they have lasers aimed to my head and aimed to my heart. The commander says after three, one, two, three, fire. Then I realize they've all missed. Now, it's true, I shouldn't be surprised that I'm alive because I have to be alive to acknowledge that I'm alive. But it doesn't mean I shouldn't be surprised that the reason I'm alive is because of the improbability, the immense improbability that these marksmen missed. Similarly, we shouldn't be surprised that this is a life permitting universe because we're alive in this universe. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't be surprised that the reason there is life and we are alive because of this intricate cosmic fine tuning and established balance and calculated balance and design in the universe. So we've dealt with the major contention, so it necessarily follows that this universe is as a result of a cosmic supernatural designer. Thank you very much for listening. Peace be with you.